the next speaker for the morning session, we have Mr. Mikel Balansag, which will talk about employee centricity, innovation for people uh, focus. Now, who is uh, Mikel Balansag? Now, Mikel Balansag is actually um, a multi-certified professional and an HR thought leader, a learning process facilitator, and an entrepreneur all rolled into one. Mikel possesses the uh, a diverse experience in the HR field, which made him part of the top 100 Filipinos on LinkedIn uh, for 2019 and 2020. He also held various critical HR leadership roles at various prominent companies where he championed performance um, improvement, employee and labor relations, talent acquisition, and business continuity. He's recently named among the most people-focused CEO by HR Excellence in um, Awards 2021. Now, to show us how to place value in employee centricity, let's call on Mr. Mikel Balansag. All right, together, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. Mikel Balansag. Hi, Mikel. Good morning. Good morning, Jester, and good morning, everyone. It's so good to be back again for the fourth time. I've um, been watching the uh, assembly since yesterday. I learned a lot. I hope I can still share something um, to the thousands of uh, viewers today. Right. Your topic is actually very uh, interesting because uh, we are now in the post-pandemic area where uh, we get to um, understand that the HR is uh, the best to be in the human uh, nature now. No, We have to be a human um, as um, HR professionals. All right, so uh, perhaps we could start. Um, may I invite your uh, presentation to be ready for the um, PowerPoint? Sure, just give me one minute. Sure. Now, as we go through the sessions, the past days, now it has becoming um, a lot of of um, of thoughts uh, from our leaders that uh, we should always um, focus on the uh, employee centricity, or we should uh, always take a look at how our employees doing, no, especially in securing their psychological safety. So, to continue this afternoon session, may I leave now the floor to Mr. Miguel Balansag. Okay. Mr. Mikel, take it away. All right, again, um, good morning, everyone. Um, at least before lunch, I get to uh, talk to uh, everyone this morning. Sabi ko ngayon, I've, I've been watching since yesterday. It's a, it's a really jam-packed um, assembly. It keeps getting better from one assembly to another. And um, there's so much to learn. I'm also looking forward to the next... Um, couple of speakers uh, that is um, that, that that will be will be presenting um, in the rest of the day to learn more about their insights as well uh, as for me um, I'd like to uh, talk to you about employee centricity uh, innovation for uh, people focus workplace now innovation we always hear this Sigura, in the last maybe in the last half decade, uh, we always hear the word innovation, introducing innovation, AI. We've had a lot of topics yesterday about AI. And we always correlate innovation with technology. Lagi natin kinoconnect na pag innovation, technology yan. Pag innovation, it entails cost parang ganon. But really, innovation means making changes in the things that are already established. So yun talagang innovation. Most um, would include yun nga, introducing new products, new tools, but it also includes adapting to new methods and ideas. That's also part of innovating a current uh, processes that uh, your company have. We must understand how to make our workplace people focus. Uh, yun na yung sabi nga ni Jester. And um, to complement then Ron's uh, topic earlier, this is really important that, that we look at uh, moving forward, how to truly make employees happy at work. In my many years of working, XX number of years of working, particularly in HR, I've read hundreds of thousands of employee survey results. Now, you'll see a lot of that. I'm sure your company also does that. 
uh, doing employee survey results maybe twice a year, once a year. And as HR, we always want to see um, the objective results um, for us to get a feel of how the organization is doing, how our people um, are feeling, and what we can do to improve um, their, um, their stay with the company. Uh, so as for me, what I know in terms of their happiness is that employees all want the same things. Pare pareho lang talaga yung gusto nila. Out of all of the survey results that I've read, there's they all want the same things. Uh, there's about 44 million workers in the Philippines. Uh, that's according to um, the dollar report uh, late of last year. And about 40% of them would say that they're generally happy at work. That means about 26.19 million are not happy. But what does that do to those people and the organizations that they work in? And dame, um, 60% is a lot. We're, we're looking at 26.19 um, million or almost um, um, three in every five employees are not uh, happy with their work or their current organization. But what, um, how does that affect, affect uh, them and the company? Well, on a financial perspective, organizations that have a lot of uh, happy employees would have three times of revenue growth compared to organizations where that's not true. Uh, so some mga organizations where employees are generally satisfied, generally um, happy, fulfilled with what they do, you'll see that these are the organizations that are flourishing regardless of the situation, pandemic or not. Um, there's continuous revenue. And if you look at employee turnover, which is also maybe a major metric, for HR, yung um, turnover rate, or sometimes it's called attrition rate, it's half that of organizations that have a lot of unhappy employees. So the turnover or the attrition rate of companies with extremely happy employees or generally happy employees um, reflects only half of those companies, maybe among the same of the same industry, um, with unhappy employees. So that's, that says a lot, um, not just on a financial perspective, but on a lot of things. Uh, now, we always um, see and hear nga, sabi ko nga kanina, that when we need to introduce something to um, the organization, to the management, on how we can address these, usually after you see all the survey results, after you've um, done your analysis on everything that's going on. Maybe you've conducted exit interviews and you've um, conduct um, a report out of that. There's always cost nakasama. Laging uh, may 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 um, peso value for us to uh, resolve this. We need to f invest more on this and do more of that, which would entail cost. But here's the tricky part. You don't have to spend more money to make this happen, make employees happy. There are a lot of um, ways on how you can innovate your current processes or start doing them without having to talk about um, money. It's not about ping pong tables. It's not about free massages or not even about pizza party every now and then we always see that eh? it's not it's not about the perks it's not always about the perks it can play a factor but it's not um, always about the perks it's about treatment it's about how your employees uh, everyone in the company how they're treated by their leaders, number one, and number two, by how uh, they are treated by the people that they work with, by everyone in general. 
within uh, the organization. That's what matters the most. Now, uh, Jester has, has mentioned this uh, earlier during the introduction. Last month, the HR Excellence Awards, which is the region's, um, it's, a, it's an HR program aimed to celebrate and honor um, work that HR did to support their organizations and people uh, and how they are resilient in pushing boundaries of people's strategy um, has come up with um, a list on a Southeast Asia uh, level. And among the top five of the list is, thankfully, yours truly, very honored, alongside really big giant organizations, including AIA, including Starbucks, which we all know uh, they really have uh, they really have good um, company culture and how they uh, look after their employees. Now, this is not something that's easy work, especially for the leadership. So today I'd like to use uh, this platform. Um, it'll be very quick. But I'd like to use this opportunity to share um, some secrets, maybe, um, on how to truly create um, happy employees, at least from my perspective. Secret number one, in organizations where employees are happy, what you find is two things that are present. Laging, laging dalawa. Uh, these two things are, are always important and are always present. One, trust. And the other is respect. And again, going back to um, a couple of slides earlier, um, this encompasses everyone, um, top to bottom, lahat, regardless of the level, side by side. The level of trust and the level of respect should be present in everything um, and how we deal with our employees. We always hear leaders, and dami nito, I'm sure some of you will agree. We always hear, hear leaders from different organizations uh, that, that, they, that they'd say, we trust our employees or that we empower our employees, madami yan. Uh, there are a lot of words, especially during town halls or general assemblies or press releases. You always hear that. But what really happens inside uh, when, here's a good example, when an employee, say an employee, very basic, an employee would be needing a laptop. So it's, a, it's an office work um, and an employee needs a, a laptop. And this is a very true example, I'm sure, a lot of you would agree, not just on laptop, but on other necessary things to do uh, your work or be more effective in your work. 12 people would have to approve for that laptop to be issued. Ganun yung level, maybe it's, maybe for smaller companies, it's not 12, but five is still a lot um, of approvers to get this one employee, uh, their laptop, for them to be more effective in what they do. So for the employee, yeah, all the words are right, that there's trust in the employees, that the employees are empowered. But 12 levels of approval for a 20, 25,000 peso laptop, you've actually spent more money than the laptop through wasted company hours just to get the approval and the employee feels maybe they're not really that trusted so what can organizations do to have a high level of trust maybe this is something that's already happening um, some of you are nodding um, at the other end of of, of this uh, laptop that i have here um, what can we do to overturn that? Um, or if we're um, a new company, we're, we're um, building up something or we have plans for the future, um, how can organizations uh, have a high level of trust to their employees, with their employees? Um, sharing 
um, how we do it at Circa Logica Group for our employees, they're told, do whatever you think is right when servicing the client. Um, no um, standard SOPs because things will be a lot different. Uh, things, scenarios are very unique. Uh, I am employee. Um, to try to work um, things out as long as they feel that it's the right thing to do. And if and when they're the client, they would want to be served the same way. So to have this level of trust to employees to do whatever they think is right makes the employee um, or all of your employees feel great. And that is why um, maybe bragging a little, but that is why we're known to uh, for delivering some of the best services uh, nationwide in terms of HR solutions. Secret number two is fairness. The thing that erodes trust in an organization, in any organization actually, uh, faster than anything else, is when employees feel that they're being treated unfairly employees want to be treated the same regardless of their rank of their tenure of their age of their experience their education my mba voila or their job category they wanted uh, to be treated fairly compared to anyone else when i think about um, one of the uh, of a really good organization who gets fairness really right, uh, an organization that comes to mind would be Salesforce. So I've read about this um, a couple of years back. I'd like to share it with you. They found that men and women working in the same job with the same level of proficiency were making different salaries. So they do exactly an identical uh, role in an identical job, but they're not getting paid the same. So what Salesforce uh, leadership did back then, they immediately calculated the difference and they invested 150 million. Well, that's that's in, in pesos. Um, it's 3 million in, in USD to try and balance things out to make sure that everyone is treated fairly because everyone's contributing and everyone's doing exactly the same thing uh, to contribute for the company. And that's a really good example of making sure that everyone's treated fairly. Um, I'm not saying that you look at the salaries of, of your employees and try to make sure that everyone's aligned, but this is just one very good example there are a lot of other examples to make sure that we align uh, we um, put equality in the workplace regardless of their uh, of their role you know, of their tenure of their education or whatever secret number three is listening so to be a listener who connects with all types of people. That's uh, the listening that I'm uh, trying to point out here. We have to unlearn a few things uh, for us to listen very well. And we've all been taught about active listening, no common answer workplace, maybe during orientation or if, or if you're in a uh, service industry. We've all been taught about active listening. We were taught about eye contact we were taught about intense stare compassionate look tinuturo yung yung mga yan but that's not listening we were even taught about repeating what the uh the other person said that's not listening either being humble and always hunting and searching for the best idea possible that is listening. And employees will feel whether you're doing it or not, 
trust me, they know. They want to know that when they talk and share an idea, siguro the question that comes to mind would be, did you consider it when you made a decision? The one that everybody appreciates and wants when they're speaking is to know that when they what they say matters so much, you might actually change your mind. Because otherwise, what's the point of the conversation? They, they're trying to present something to you um, that they feel might work. Yes, it may not work, but as a leader, have you um, considered that when you made the decision? Or pumasok sa kabila, tumagos sa kabila. That's not listening. Because if this is the scenario or the setup in your organization, then people would think na it doesn't make sense for me to pitch my idea kasi hindi rin naman papakinggan. Or hindi rin naman consider in the first place. And that can contribute as well to employees being unhappy. We all know the things we need to change. Let, let's talk about change. The things we need to do differently. The way you behave as an HR manager, as a manager in general, as a company owner, as a CEO, the way you behave, the way you treat others, the way you respond, the way you support, that defines the work experience for everyone around you. Lahat. Um, it's a it's a mirror effect. Kung ano yung ginagawa mo, how you behave, how you um, do your work, the ethics that you have, ganun na mangyayari um, sa buong organization. So you can't expect that people are honest if you're not honest. That's, that's the point. Change to be a better person. We always hear that. The world is already littered with all those failures. And I mean, like, sabi niya na, they, they will change to be a better person. Um, I'll change so that I'll be uh, better next time. And I mean, like, sabi niya lahat sa fail. Changing because there's something you believe in, uh, maybe some purpose that you have, uh, where you're willing to risk almost everything. Because it's so important to you, that's the reason to change. Hindi just for you to be a better person. Wala nang epekto yun. This is my last slide. Um, and I'd like to end um, with, with, with this slide. In the corporate world, we always measure everything through KPIs. So we see this a lot, especially if you're in the um, if you're if you're an HR practitioner, no, um, automatic na to. automatic. You look at KPIs, um, you create, you craft KPIs, um, and this is for all of us to measure performance of employees. No, kaya ang KPI key performance indicators for us to measure how. Um, employees, how our staff are, are doing, if they're doing well or they're not doing well. But maybe, just maybe moving forward, we can change our definition, our personal definition of KPI and start focusing on people in general and make it keep people inspired. At the end of the day, it's all that matters. Inspired workplace, you'll get the best results on a financial perspective. You'll grow um, the revenue. You'll keep people less turnover. That's all that matters. So thank you very much. Um, I am more than happy to address any uh, questions uh, that you may have. These are um, our communication lines if you want to reach out to Circological Group. Um, and also follow me on, on LinkedIn. 
Um, as Jester, what Jester has mentioned earlier, really proud to be among the top 100 Filipinos on LinkedIn for inspiration and learning for three consecutive years in a row, actually, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Again, thank you very much, and please enjoy the rest of the day. Jester. All right. Thank you very much again, Mr. Miguel Balanza, for that um, very uh, good no, reminder. No, as we tend to forget all those basics and the foundations, because we always remember the uh, methodologies, we always remember the systems, we always remember the practices, we always uh, base our our uh, uh, leadership styles no uh, with with associating it with uh, the the concepts that is uh, written on books, written on. Uh, written by uh, professional uh, speakers, etc. But if we are really, um, really want to take a look at uh, how we can really be of value to the people, is we really need to go to the basics. Now, uh, before we proceed to the next session, no, of course, I uh, would like to invite uh, the viewers to ask questions as to how how you uh, as a leader can then uh, focus on employee centricity. It, it's this is the best time to. To ask, so uh, do not be shy that uh, you're still discovering uh, as to how you can uh, be an employee-centric uh, individual or in, um, employee-centric uh, leader. So before we go through the questions, no, um, we always uh, know, and uh, sometimes even the companies uh, forget is the uh, internal uh, stakeholders because they were so focused on external stakeholders not actually remembering that the key stakeholder, um, which is uh, the employees, um, are actually driving the company and contributes to everything else. Now, with that in mind, uh, as we understand the employee-centered leaders and employee-centric leadership, um, as an employee-centric leader, what do you believe um, an employee-centric leader uh, do differently? Um, I've... Thank you, Jester. I've said this um, a lot of times, um, and I'll say it again um, for uh, for everyone watching today. Uh, just treat everyone as adults. Uh, that's really what I believe in. Um, you've um, you've hired your employees based on all of the qualifications uh, that you want. Uh, they already pass all the screening that you want. And now that you're expecting them to perform and provide output to the reason um, they were hired for, it's about time to just treat them as adults and make sure and, and understand that they're adults, working professionals. They know how mm. to make their own decisions. They know what's um, best for their role. Um, and what's best for the customers. So this encompasses everything, learning how to listen, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some um, are still micromanagers. That they, they always want to make sure that they understand each and every step that's happening. And if one step is not maybe at par to how they envision it to be, they kind of um, call it out to the employee. Mm -hmm. But then again... Uh, they're adults. They, they wouldn't want to ruin uh, something uh, that they're working hard for. So just just that, just that mm -hmm. simple line. Treat your employees as um, normal thinking adults. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for that. Now, um, why do you believe uh, that uh, it's best to create a uh, succession plan? Let's say, for example, we always tend to bring out... Uh, Tier two uh, leaders, like uh, we were while we are doing um, some strategy uh, decision based uh, um, initiatives. No, um, while doing that, we're, we're building a fleet of leaders. No, uh, of course, who are competent uh, to manage things by themselves. Why do you think it's important to to create a uh, a succession plan? Um. Well, thank you. Well, for as as what the the name implies, succession. Uh, you need to come up with, that's important for you to come up with the list of um, the individuals who will be your successor. And the root word of that is success. Uh, doing business, you don't do business 
for it to fail. At the end of the day, um, you want it to flourish, you want it to um, upscale. And there will be a time, um, planned or unplanned, where you can no longer manage that or you hopefully not won't be there to manage that. And you've already built a vision for the organization. You've already established a culture for the organization. Uh, so it's important to be ready uh, because you can fail your clients. You can fail your employees. So it's important that there's a succession plan in place at all times. But going back to the main topic today, um, it's also equally important uh, that that someone um, or those individuals who are in line uh, in the succession plan also shares the same vision, the, sh the same mantra, the same leadership style as you are, because otherwise everything will just fall apart and everything will just go to waste. So it doesn't have to be a relative. I've seen that a lot. A relative, the the younger brother, or any or, or anyone, it has to be someone who shares almost an identical vision, um, or even better than you as the next in line for succession. And, and it's actually it takes a, a really a, um, you know an understanding of of uh, you uh, entrusting the the uh, responsibilities because you're you're actually creating a succession plan but of course before again no, before we interest now of course the leaders and ceos are actually uh, helping the the um, the upcoming leaders to be prepared no they're not just really um letting them uh, do the things on their own but actually guiding them um and right. i believe now being awarded as the uh top uh, most people focus ceo again that signifies that uh, that's the work you've been doing um for for your uh, leadership now uh last but not the least now um what i what what caught me the most um of uh, from your presentation is the trust and the the treatment now why do you believe um giving recognition and treating team members with respect um are both important because it really takes uh, you know humility it really takes uh, uh you um removing yourself from the uh a uh, role of being a CEO, of being a leader, for you to become, um, let's admit it, no, as as human beings, being respectful um, to to uh, employees like rank and files, like um, associates level. So why do we believe that recognizing or recognition and trust or treating team members with trust are, are both important? Thank you. Um, see. And I'd like to um, also uh, piggyback on what you've said earlier. You know? um, when you, especially for entrepreneurs um, who started uh, their company from scratch, the initial goal is to maybe just be um, your own employer, your own boss. That's always the initial goal um, to make sure that you... Um, Parang you have control of your time, which is not true. No, you, you no longer work nine to five. Um, but that's 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 the initial um, goal. Na, yun nga, wala ka ng boss, hawak mo lahat. Um, but eventually, especially for HR, HR leaders, HR um, leaders actually make good company leaders, make good CEOs, because the heart is already there. Um, and you you know you know best formula to flourish uh, an organization. Eh? Eventually, as you grow the organization, nagsis shift kasi uh, your perspective shifts. Um, you start treating your employees as family, um, and their family as your own family, their dreams as your own dreams. You um, you started seeing them as your children or your brothers and sisters, and you start wanting. The best for them as well in their uh, career because all of you contributes um, to one goal together, and that starts shifting your perspective. Na hindi na I'm na, I'm no longer doing this for myself, but I'm doing this for everyone. I'm no longer doing this so that my family can have something, uh, a food on their table. 
but I'm doing this so that everyone, all of these families, all of my employees' families would have a food on their table as well. Um, and with that uh, thought, that idea in mind, and again, going back to what I said earlier of um, treating people as adults, um, you would also want to make sure that you don't treat them as employees uh, because you, you work together on this. Now, they, yes, sure, there are boundaries, but you treat them as your allies, as your partners. And partners, be it business, romantic, or whatever, should complement one another. And that's also the same um, secret that has to happen in the workplace. If you treat your employees as your partners for growth, then make sure that you also recognize their hard work. You also let them know if they did something wrong and help them um, overcome that and treat them as if, uh, as how you would want to be treated if, the, if you switch the situation. So it's really not about being a CEO or being a rank and file. It's about working together because all roles are equally important it's it's impossible to be a manager if you're not managing anyone or a supervisor without supervising anyone and it can be equally challenging for a rank and file to not have anyone to guide them so all roles are equally important and all roles deserve the same level of respect and recognition all right. Thank you very much again for that uh, very inspirational and uh, encouraging, um, you know, thoughts. Now it's a really good perception. Now, with that in mind, I hope now the leaders were able to to uh, gather now your thoughts and uh, get best practices from um, the awarded uh, most people uh, focus CEO, uh, Mr. Michael Balansag. Now.